Hello, so we're going to do the June uh, or the May 2016 paper for Brecht and Chemistry. So, a uh, nice easy one to start off with. We've got uh, an isotope of chlorine and it's the chloride ion and it wants me to find out which statement is correct. So, is it... Uh, um, and so I look up on the periodic table Find out that chlorine has got 17 protons, so it's either going to be A or B. If you have a look at it, it's got 37 as a mass number. 37 minus 17 gives me 20 neutrons. And it's got minus iron, so it must have one more electron than protons. So the answer to that is B. Okay, for the next one then, what is the formula of ammonium sulfide? Well, the ammonium iron is NH4 plus... So we've got NH4 plus the sulfide iron. Sulfide, sulfur is in group six, so it's going to have two minus. So it's S2 minus, and therefore I need two of those for every sulfide iron. So the answer to two is C. Right, so I've got some calcium nitrate decomposing. Uh, a student decomposes 0 0.005 moles of calcium nitrate and collects all the gas, and it wants me to calculate the volume of gas collected at room temperature and pressure. Because it's a room temperature and pressure, I can use the equation that one mole of any gas occupies 24 centimetres cubed. So the first thing I need to find out is how many moles of gas I'm going to produce. Well, I actually make uh, the uh, nitrogen dioxide and I make oxygen gas. Um, so in total, I make 2.5 moles of gas for every one mole of that. So the moles of gas produced is 2.5 times 0 0.005, which gives me 0 0.125. Then to find out the volume of gas, I times that number by 24,000. And if you do that, you will find the answer is 300 centimetres cubed, which is D. So which of these equations is not a neutralisation reaction? Um, well, the first one, uh, in neutralisation, remember it's an acid plus a base, uh, acid plus a carbonate. Um, that's acid, that's base, uh, that's carbonate, that's acid. And then ammonia is a base, hydrochloric acid is of course an acid. So the answer to A, A of course is a redox reaction um, because calcium is changing oxidation state, going from zero to two plus here, and hydrogen is changing oxidation state from plus one to zero here. So the answer is A for that one. Okay, so what is the oxidation number of nitrogen in magnesium nitrate? Um, well, really, uh, if you know the, really you should know the nitrate ion is NO3 minus, but even if you don't, um, magnesium of course is in group two, so it's going to have two plus charge. Uh, so that means because you've got two nitrates, each nitrate must have a minus charge. Oxygen you know is minus two. Minus two times three is minus six. So you know that whatever nitrogen is, minus six must add up to minus one, and therefore nitrogen is plus five, so the answer is C. How many orbitals are occupied in a silicon atom? Well, if you check out the atomic number of silicon, it is, of course, 14. So it's going to be 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p2. For the electronic configuration so you're going to have one orbital there another one here so one one you've got three there you've got one there but remember for these p orbitals the electrons will spread themselves out like so so that is actually two orbitals there so five six seven eight the answer is c okay so what is the shape around the carbon atom in graphene um, well, it's the same as in graphite, so it's going to be trigonal planar, so 8 is D. Right, so for this one, uh, what, what is, which electronic configuration represents the element with the largest personalization energy? Well, um, 
we'll whiz through these, but hopefully you can see this element is in group two, this element is in group six, because I've got six A electrons, uh, that element is in group eight, um, and this element is in group two, but in the third shell there. So it's got to be the one that's in group eight. So the answer is C. Okay, so successive ionization energy of four elements in period three are shown below. Which letter could represent magnesium? So if it's magnesium, you're looking for a big jump after you've removed the first two electrons, because magnesium, of course, is in group two. So um, once you move those two electrons, outer electrons, you're into the next shell. So if you have a look, you should be able to see there is a massive jump um, for, for B. Uh, you've got 1,450 to 7,733. So the answer is B for this one. Okay, so a uh, student adds aqueous sodium carbonate to one test tube and silver nitrate to a second, and then we add sulfuric acid to each test tube. What will I see? Well, I've got an acid and a carbonate for this tube here, so I would see it fizz, so it's either going to be C or D. Silver nitrate will react with um, sulfuric acid, uh, to give me a displacement, well not displacement reaction, give me a precipitation reaction of silver sulfate. So I see a precipitate of silver sulfate. So the answer to 11 is D. Okay, so I've now got a Hess cycle to do. Notice they've given me combustion, uh, entropy of combustion here. So we can draw a little circle. Down here is going to be my combustion product, which is CO2 and H2O and my arrows go down. Uh, the combustion of carbon and hydrogen they've given me, so it's going to be four times minus 394 and five times minus 286. If you do that, you get minus 3006, if you add them all up together. For uh, butane, they told me it's minus 2877. You can then do a little circle if you like to build up your equation. Can you see I've got clockwise arrows going around there and these arrows are going clockwise. That arrow is going anti-clockwise. So I can fill my equation. Delta H minus 2877 equals minus 3006. You rearrange that equation and you get the answer to be B. Right, so it's spot the isomer time. Um, so let's have a quick, we'll just count some carbons up. One, two, three, four, five. That's got five carbons. One, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. Those two, so it's, um, it can't be that one because that's got six and the other's got five. If you have a look at it, this is unsaturated. So the number of hydrogens can't be the same, so it can't be that one. So it must be E and G, so the answer to that is B. Okay, so what is the name of the following compound? Right, let's, that's going to be our longest chain, isn't it? So it's four carbons, which means it's butane. So it's either going to be C or D. Let's go through it. Um, that's carbon one, two, three, four. So it's going to be 2,3-dichloro-2-methyl-butane, uh, which is C. You may be wondering why it can't be this one if you started numbering that way, 1, 2, 3, 4. Um, however, if you notice, I'm using two twos and a three here, and I'm using one two and two threes here. So this one's got the lowest numbers, and therefore the answer is C. Uh, right, so this is an interesting one. Um, if you draw these molecules out, uh, you're looking for a non-polar molecule. Um, I've drawn out B, because that's what the answer is, which is 2,3-dichlorobut2-ene. Um, and hopefully you can see that the chlorines are opposite each other, and therefore, though they're electronegative, they're cancelling each other out. Because um, I've got a minus, they're, they're opposite, and so uh, overall the molecule would be non-polar. So the answer is B.